Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. A team of scientists analyzing the coma and tail of the comet Hale-Bopp have published their observations in a landmark paper. What they have discovered cannot be explained by the standard model of comets. The scientists analyzed the comet's surprising coma and tail at distances up to 27 times the average distance between the Earth and the Sun. The structure of the comet's tail and its relative brightness at such a large heliocentric distance remains a mystery for comet scientists. The authors state, Our analysis shows that the shape of Hale-Bopp's dust tail in these images cannot be explained using the usual solar gravity plus solar radiation pressure dynamical model. The analysis suggests that the most likely cause of the discrepancy is that the dust is being charged by the solar wind, then being affected by the interplanetary magnetic field via the Lorentz force. The analysis also suggests that Hale-Bopp was actively emitting particles when these images were taken, and the tail characteristics changed between observations. What does the Electric Universe model of comets tell us about this new discovery? The comet Hale-Bopp was discovered in 1995. It had a coma at 7.2 AUs, that is over seven times the distance of the Earth from the Sun. And it was remarked at the time that it was rare to see such activity beyond the order of 5 AU, that is five times the distance of the Earth from the Sun. When it comes to comets and the phenomena associated with them are very important from the electric universe model of the solar system and an electrified Sun. They continue to cause problems for the standard model of comets. And there's a very good reason for this. And that is that there are a number of huge dinosaurs in the room, so to speak, when it comes to the theory of comets. For instance, there is an assumption that comets are primordial and uh, have been there for more than four billion years. And also, they are thought to have been associated with the formation of the solar system. But as has been repeatedly said in these space news, the theory of the formation of the solar system does not work. There's never been any successful theoretical work which shows how you form individual tiny planets out of a huge ring of dust and gas surrounding a star. And to say that the comets are leftover material from that ring of dust and gas, therefore, is not supported theoretically. And also, there is no real evidence for it. It's merely an assumption. There are therefore assumptions about the composition of comets. They're supposed to be mostly ice and interstellar dust. There's also assumptions about their subsequent modification over billions of years by collisions and cosmic rays and solar radiation and so on. So it was expected early on that the surfaces would not be pristine ices. But of course, since we've had some close-up images of comets, we have found that they look just like asteroids complete with craters and all of the other surface features that you see on asteroids. It's rare to see comets flare up at great distances from the Sun. Comet Halley uh, was shown to have flared up beyond the distance of Saturn. But this particular instance is the greatest distance that a comet has seen to have structure, a tail if you like, at more than 20 times the distance of the Earth from the Sun, beyond the orbit of Uranus. So this raises uh, huge problems for the standard model because the dust and the tail of a comet is supposed to be material that's lifted off by sublimating ices. But at that distance, there is no ice or any other chemical activity that could cause the dust to lift off. Because of the difficulty in explaining how dust is to lift off a comet when there is no ices sublimating, there's no jets off the comet to blow the dust off. It suggested that the surface material, the dust on the very tiny dust on the surface, and that's another assumption that we have very tiny dust on the surface of a comet, is charged to a value of about five volts positive, and that the motion of the solar wind at 750 kilometers a second past the comet nucleus is sufficient to lift off the dust. And then it is shown, or there's an attempt to show that the electromagnetic forces on these charged dust particles are sufficient to explain the comet tail. Because the tail appears in different positions in 2005 and 2008. And that seems to be due to two different jets in different locations on the nucleus. And that is stated in the paper, but 
it's never been explained why dust should lift off in jets off a comet nucleus. The electric universe model has always said that these are cold cathode discharges and a cold cathode discharge rips material off the surface in a jet from very highly localized spots on the nucleus of the comet. Of course by saying or mentioning jets in the paper it is then faced with the problem that it appears that they were different jets in 2005 and 2008. But if it's just dust being lifted off the comet nucleus, what causes the jets to switch on and off at such a distance with no appreciable solar heating? The standard model, of course, uses dust charging and this frozen in magnetic field, which is another assumption which is being shown to be incorrect by Hans Alfein himself. He said this is one of the biggest issues in astrophysics that astronomers assume magnetic fields can be locked in, can be frozen in to a moving plasma. And that is just not the case. The electrical forces of a charged sun are sufficient to explain both the jets on a comet and also the activity in the tail. And what's more, the formation of very tiny dust particles because in the process of the electric discharge on the surface of a comet, eroding the rocky surface, it does so by producing very fine dust particles. The fine dust particles in a comet's tail were not expected when the very first flyby of Comet Halley was undertaken. The fineness of the dust particles exceeds that of interstellar dust particles. And so there was the question, how does a comet actually form these very fine dust particles? And the answer is by electrical sputtering of the surface of the comet. In other words, an electrical discharge originating on the nucleus of the comet. It would therefore be useful to test this idea that, as happened with Comet Halley beyond the orbit of Saturn, the outburst of Comet Halley seemed to be correlated with an outburst from the Sun which reached that distance at about that time. So perhaps the tail of Comet Hale-Bopp beyond the orbit of Uranus can be looked at in terms of activity on the Sun which have, has reached that distance at this time. I think the main point to be made is that all of these papers that come out to try and explain observations of comets all start with this mantra that they were formed at the birth of the solar system and were leftovers and that they are made mostly of interstellar ices and dust and yet we have images of comet nuclei which show that they appear to be rocky. We have material from the tail of a comet which show that it has minerals which you would expect to find on a planetary surface. In other words, they've undergone the kinds of changes you would expect on a planet not out in deep space. And also the fragmentation of comets and the speed with which they suddenly disintegrate is something which is just not explained by any solar heating. And even the movement of dust particles and the fact that they seem to move much faster than expected based on just sunlight and heating, sublimation of ices and so on, none of these things are addressed. It's as if this disconfirming evidence doesn't exist, or at least we won't address it in this particular paper. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.